Hi, I'm Brianna. Hi, I'm Ben. And we are reviewing Raising the Bar and Closing the Gap, Whatever It Takes by Richard Dufour. So the premise of this book is the importance of focusing on individual students' needs and not just the overall schools or the districts themselves. Um, Richard Dufour starts off the book by just explaining a brief history of education and how up until today has been very business-like and focused much more on statistics and numbers and test scores um, and how recently it has developed into focusing more on understanding students' needs and educators viewing that and understanding the importance and focusing their skills on that. Um, Richard DeVore uses the No Child Left Behind Act as an example of what education should strive away from because the No Child Left Behind Act had very high expectations of school districts um, and focused largely on state testing and statistics and how if schools didn't meet these standards there were serious repercussions such as loss of funds for the schools. Um, Richard DeFore focused on a multitude of case studies of different schools and how they focused on um, the development of the individual students and how he perceived these as um, great examples of what he is trying to get across to his readers. Um, ben will be talking about Adelaide Stevenson High School, whereas I will be talking about Boone Elementary School. If you would like to start with a high school. So I'm going to discuss Adelaide High School, and, uh, Adelaide Stevenson High School in Chicago, Illinois. Um, it started out as a had a really um, good location, which was urbanly really good, with um, very good middle class area and upper class area. But, um, there were some students that fell through the cracks, with 35% uh, of the students um, earning D's and F's, and 25% of the student body actually having to repeat the uh, courses. Uh, so there was a lot of negativity, and there were parents from Lincolnshire and uh, Illinois that wanted to opt out of going into the Chicago district, I mean the, the Stevenson High School district, and you know there was a lot of negativity with that, and students you know didn't want to go to that high school, and there was so much negativity that you know, all of this led to you know, reevaluation of teachers and faculty at this school, and you know you have programs that come about. Um, there was a summer program called the you know, program that would summer strengthening program for students that would get them to you know meet it was during the summer they would earn credits for the school. It was a four hour class, four times a week, where they would get like a teacher that would you know work with the, these students that had the ability that liked you know, working with students that had a difficult time, you know, um, adjusting to school and didn't really perform too well academically. And he had a love for this, and it helps school students because they can earn credits before they actually start high school. And so freshmen join this program, and you know, they learn from this program, and eventually it helps them to do better when they start school. You know, there's also programs that were called. Um, Student support teams, which are comprised of student counselors, you know, social workers, dean of students, and they have the responsibility of a certain number of students, and they guide these students through their first years of you know the high school program, and you know it, it helps them to accommodate themselves and make sure that they're actually doing their work. And if this fails, you know, then there's a whole bunch of you know, programs that they go to. There's mandatory tutoring sessions, mandatory study halls. And, you know, all of these are part of this pyramid that they have within the school that if something, they're not doing well, then they go down to another tier until eventually they need like special ed, which that, should, that is the last resort though, because mm -hmm. so, they want to make sure that these students are very successful. And, and getting to that top of the pyramid. Yeah. So this is a quick glimpse at the uh, pyramid that is available to students. Well, 
this is the way they run their student assistance programs at Stevenson High School. And it goes up into a you know, chronological pyramid. Of, if you keep failing, which is the last resort, then you keep going down this pyramid until eventually you succeed. And, um, yeah, so the success that has come from all these failures is actually quite astounding. Um, through initiatives such as, you know, um, you know, working with students if they're to keep them adjusted in their school environment with the guidance counseling and everything. It's promoted school students to do really well in their studies and you know if they've had advanced placement enrollment which is a whole lot more than what it was. In nineteen eighty five there was only seven percent of students that were, you know, taking those tests and only about uh, eighty eight students took a um, 133 advanced placement exams. In 2004, there were 1,286 students who wrote 2,503 advanced placement exams, and 65% of those students performed well on those exams, earning, you know, earning uh, honors grades. In 2009, uh, there was uh, 1,537 writing exams, and number of exams was 3,489. So, in 2008, the graduating class, 80% of that graduating class took AP course material classes, and 80% of that graduating class received college credit for the work they did. This school is still fostering that incentive of you know, working hard, working with students, not just collective number of students and worrying about results, but actual individual students and the process that goes into teaching them has fostered this change in this school, which is continuing today. Um, so Brianna was going to talk about Boone's Mill. Boone, yeah, Boone's Mill Elementary School. Um, so Richard DeForest starts off the chapter of discussing this school, um, and he uses a quote from a previous principal, Bernice Cobbs. And she essentially says, every school must create systems to monitor student learning that are doable, teacher friendly, and provide teachers and teams with the timely information vital to provide, excuse me, vital to improve instruction and intervention. Um, which he, I think with that quote, he essentially is like leading into, again, his whole concept of what he wants the book to be about. Um, so Boone's Mill Elementary School is located in Virginia. Um, it's a relatively small district. It has only 465 students from pre-K to fifth grade. Um, the entirety of the area experiences loss of jobs, is in the bottom 10% of the Commonwealth of Virginia, yet they are still expected um, to face the same assessments and challenges as other schools in more affluent areas of the state. Um, so in 1995, the Virginia Department of Education revised a K-12 through standards of learning and these standards had very high expectations in English, math, science, social studies. Um, and if 70% of the students did not meet these standards, the schools faced possible loss of accreditation. And the first time the test happened, to, the first time the tests were implemented, only 2% of the schools met the 70% target. Um, and even though Boone's Mill Elementary School was in that 10% um, class, they became one of the most successful schools in Vermont to meet these new standards. Um, the school um, has student learning tools and have been on a steady climb over the past 10 years of being on the professional learning um, community journey that they've been on, even though there have been five different principals in that time frame. Um, also, 50% of the staff now are new since their implementation of professional learning communities. So, Richard DeForest split the, um, kind of just described the, their progress in a series of steps, and step one was they were building shared knowledge of current reality. So 
there was a staff decision at the elementary school um, that the most best hope of achieving the goal of learning for all the students was to embrace the concept of professional learning communities. So the staff's decision to embrace the concept of professional learning communities um, led them with two essential questions, which were, how will the school respond when students are not fully grasping what they're being taught despite the teacher's best efforts? And how will the school respond to students who have already demonstrated profesh, uh, proficiency in essential, of essential knowledge and skills? Um, so the school itself already offered after school programs, study programs, summer programs, tutorial programs, um, but the obstacles with these were that they weren't required and they were set at different times that made it difficult for students to attend them, like parents not being able to bring them to after school programs or interfering with other classes and the students who needed them the most because they were optional didn't attend them. Um, so the staff confronted this and realized that there was a need for a change um, and so they decided to initiate a team learning process. Um, so the step two was fostering adult learning so students can learn. Um, so the school developed and created teams from the, of teachers um, that focused greatly on the skills and knowledge that each student was struggling with. So um, the staff focused um, on learning to identify and assist each student, um, and not just necessarily the class as a, as a whole. This te uh, the teachers would say, this student is struggling with this, how can we help them? And so on and so forth with all of the students. And this worked for a while, and but it was still not quite enough. So um, they um, actually, um, the next step was aligning resources and purpose and priorities. Um, the principal of the school um, suggested shifting state remedial funds from the after school and the summer programs to a part-time floating tutor and the staff was very eager eager and accepting of this. Um, essentially the, uh, the principal said that it was okay to have the tutor under certain circumstances and those circumstances were each grade level team had to make its student accessible to the tutor um, for a minim minimum of 30 minutes a day. Um, the tutorial time must be consistent among all of the classrooms um, by allowing all of the grade levels by having all of the grade level students available at the same time so the tutor was um, teaching six different units rather than 20 different classrooms um, so it's much more time manageable as well um, designated time could not conflict with the other core classes such as math science social studies and English and um, the tutorial time could not also interfere with recess or any fun activities because it couldn't be um, presented or perceived as a punishment. It had to be something that was presented in a positive light. Um, so just a few things um, with the floating tutor. Um, they hired the floating tutor and had to be a district certified substitute teacher who already had a lot of experience in the Booz, uh, in the Boone's Mill Elementary School um, and already had a relationship with educators and students and the um, parents of them. Um, they were there to fulfill certain needs such as supplementary education, um, review, model, practice, test taking skills, um, and to supervise classroom activities, um, etc. Um, teachers in each grade level grouped students dependent on educational needs. For instance, K through first grade um, were built into like learning centers, whereas second through fifth grade, um, if students were already more accomplished and comprehending of um, essential knowledge and skills, they were put into separate activities as of the our, um, more struggling students. Um, the teachers also, other full-time teachers also assisted with the floating tutor and um, the teachers that had the most successful students would then go on to teaching the more struggling students. That way the students all had the, um, the opportunity to learn from all of the teachers and not just a single one. Um, within two months of implementing the floating tutor, um, it was so successful that a second one was hired. Um, and from this came other programs that helped assist, 
such as team communication, which allowed for volunteers um, throughout the community to come and help students, volunteers from parents to teachers to um, college interns to just senior citizens in the community. Um, and this provided the students with enrichment and support for their community, which greatly helped them as well. Um, the school offered grade level parent workshops, uh, which provided parents with um, an overview of concepts of the curriculum, instruction, um, strategies, purpose and format, and assessments. Um, and then most important, um, they received practice and tutorial packets so they could better help their children in their learning. Um, peer tutoring and buddy programs were implemented so higher grade level students could help the younger grade level and vice versa. Um, and the school also saw the importance of the connection of general education as well with um, special education. And so in the Boone Elementary, there had originally only been two special education teachers. And with those teachers, um, they struggled greatly because they were, instead of being able to teach the students, they were more so only just kind of like monitoring behavior. So with the new views of the school with this, they realized the importance of with the team building, they also need to do that with the special education. And so the general education teachers would help support and be have team building with the special education teachers. So no one was doing anything just solely on their own. It was a very much team building effort. Um, so the last step that's mentioned is creating systems of communication. So each grade level was asked to come up with um, systems of communication just to better help everyone within the school and some of them were examples of that were just weekly feed feedback sheets, weekly and bi-weekly grade level newsletters, um, monthly vertical team meetings, and monthly faculty meetings. Um, Boone's Mill today um, is still greatly on the rise, they're still improving. Um, Bernice Cobbs she was um, the principal from 2007 to 2009, and now she is the director of elementary education in Virginia. Um, and she said something very pertinent to this view of education, and that is the majority of our budget was spent on human resources, but I think it was worth every penny. We would rather have more people helping the children directly than having the latest textbook or newest materials. Um, According to Richard DeFore, the staff remains committed to improving their collective capacity to enhance their ability to achieve their mission, um, and their school is still greatly trying to e improve even beyond what they've already done. Um, so Boone, Mid um, Boone Mill Elementary School has actually received um, Virginia's Governor's Award for Educational Excellence every year since its professional learning community since 07, um, which is very impressive. And um, they've also received the VIP Excellence Award, which has only been um, given out twice, and they won both times of that. Um, so just some concluding thoughts from Richard DeFore. Um, he thinks it sees Boone's Mill as a great collaborative school, um, and their motto is hand in hand, we all learn. Um, and that very much captures the essence of the professional learning community concept, which is what Richard DeFore is focused on in the entirety of this book. Um, so, in the conclusion... Yeah, um, in the conclusion, school is compared to... It's a, there's an analogy from, you know, the Apollo 13 movie where, you know, those people and the astronauts in that situation were given a very dire situation, not a lot of time, and not a lot of resources. Yes, and you know they were told that this is your what you have right now to repair your spacecraft. And if you can't repair your spacecraft given these supplies, then you're pretty much screwed. So you know it's analogous to that because you know these teachers were weren't given the best districts. You know Boone's Mill had a very poor district. Mm -hmm. Chicago was, wasn't too bad, but you know they were. There's negative Still struggling and negative like attributes towards them. Right. And it's just, you know, if you continue to to work with what you have, then you can prosper in some ways. And we've seen that with Boone's Mills, with you know, all the programs they're doing. The Stevenson High School is, you know, they're 
given so many opportunities for their students. They're giving them a lot of advice with their counselors, and with the summer session for incoming freshmen. And as you can see, since 2008, they're one of the best advanced placement schools with you know, over 80% of their graduates taking those courses and then receiving college credit. It's amazing. And you know, it just goes to show you if you work with what you have, with a good initiative in place, then you can do amazing things. And these are the schools are examples of that. They're examples of this ideology. And anything else you want to say? Um, just that I think I greatly agree with Richard DeFore and his um, views on education. Um, I believe that he has the right idea in that we need to focus on individual students and what they're learning. I mean, he used four or five different case studies within this, which we didn't have time to talk about all of them in this video, but um, that it's very important that today the education is being focused on the individual students' needs, and I think that's greatly going to help all educational systems and also just... It can't be the collective whole. It can't be the collective just, whole, no. you got to see how individuals learn, because everybody's different. Absolutely, everybody's different.